Okay, second day of radiation and went pretty streamlined. Uh, so 20 minutes late, so got to remember to take a book next time because the uh, stuff that's on television there is oh, not worth watching or even listening to. Observations from today is that because everyone's wearing masks, you just see a lot of scared eyes. It's kind of weird, like everyone's there getting getting their radiation. You don't know what what people have. Most people are my age or older. And uh, I'm starting to see a couple of people that were there yesterday, so it's probably end up meeting a few people as time goes on. Um, went really quick today, and what I do is when that light beam is coming on, you hear the beep, the buzz. I try to visualize like a white light coming out of that machine and and going through my, my neck, my vocal cords, and burning all those little bastards, those little bad cells. And uh, of course the reggae music again today, it's some Bob Marley redemption song going through. And honestly, it's a surreal experience to be locked down with this machine sort of cruising around your face, zapping you with uh, beams of radiation. It's kind of weird, surreal, and a little bit enjoyable, I have to say. Maybe I'm the crazy one, but I kind of like it. I think part of that is that something's being done um, to get through this. It's like it's, it's happening. And... Um, yeah, so um, a little bit how I came to this spot. I'm not a I'm not a smoker. Maybe back in the old days, smoked a little, a little bit here and there, but nothing much. Um, my mother died of cancer when she was 59, lymphoma. She was she was battling that for a few years. Apparently my uncles back in England have died from cancer. My sister had brain tumor last year or the year before. Can't remember. She's she's recovered from that. So cancer's in our family and for some reason I've got it in my throat. Which I have been told is a good place because at least it's easy to access. But I was having a hoarse voice since May last year, so 2019. While I was living and working in, in in Barcelona in Spain, and I just put it off to being the 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 allergy season with all the these they've got these crazy trees in Barcelona that put out all this crazy pollen around springtime, and I just thought it might have been that. And then I had to go to London to work for three months because I was broke, and I couldn't get in to see a doctor there. That was just crazy. Um, so when I came back to Barcelona in September, I kind of got the ball rolling over this hoarse voice and uh, eventually had a, a biopsy done in late December or early December, but then Christmas hit and I couldn't get the results till January the 11th, or no, January the 7th, something like that, 2020. And the moment I was told the news, poor. Oh, Sorry, I've got cancer. I mean, my my head hit the deck. I almost blacked out, and I was sitting down. And I had this really great ENT surgeon, Doctor Raúl Hijano. Um, great guy. Uh, made me feel very, very good the whole time. And anyway, he's like, "Don't worry, we'll fix this." So I ended up having a tumor, which was quite thick, about two millimeters by three millimeters, or something like that. On the very edge of my left vocal cord and uh, they took it out with laser surgery and they did margins so and when they a biopsy came back like another month later which was freaking me out waiting for that biopsy that's like I say waiting's the worst part but it all came back clear which was a big relief and then COVID started to hit and my daughters freaked out and wanted me back in Australia so I decided to leave Spain. Um, I hadn't planned on coming back to Australia at all. 
and came back to Australia, went straight into quarantine for two weeks and then couldn't get to see an ENT surgeon for months because of COVID. They weren't seeing anyone. It was hard to get back into the medical system here. And when I finally did, uh, the news came that I had a polyp on my vocal cord. And then, of course, there's another biopsy and another waiting period and waiting, waiting, waiting. And uh, due to the nature of the, the cancer, which I've explained before, I'm in radiation treatment. So it's a lonely, it's a lonely journey. Um, even though I do have support around me, my daughters and, and some some men who are willing to to listen to me and be part of part of this journey. It's really a lonely journey. It's a solo, it's a solo journey because you have to you have to fight I, I keep saying you, I. I have to fight my mind. I have to fight my mind to forget about the bad things. Concentrate on the good things. Concentrate on the present. That's the biggest challenge for me. Okay, well, I'll keep going. Um, I'll see you next time. Not sure when that will be. Maybe when something changes or I have something else to say. Bye for now. Ciao. Hasta luego.